Welcome back. You know, today we're going to do a really cool fly. This is my cripple. A lot of you know that uh, you know me from my streamers and stuff like that. But before I started the streamer game for the probably the, probably the first 25 years of my guide life, I was basically a technical dry fly guy and a steelhead guide. We didn't do a lot of streamer fishing back then. Hardly anybody nymph fished, even I mean, people out west a little bit, but not a lot. And it was mostly dry flies. And so, you know, I wrote this book about streamers and kind of got pigeonholed. And then I wrote Cripples and Spinners. And that's this book here. And personally, I think if, if you get a contribution to this business, that is my biggest contribution. And it's probably not that well known. But the thing about mayflies, and that's what this is about, mayflies is that they almost always, once they hit the surface, regardless if they're duns or if they're a cripple, they almost always have a radius to their body. And the radius is a stabilizing mechanism when the fly, if it's a dun and there's any sort of wind, any sort of ripple to the water that, you know, gets them going over bumps like that, anything like that, and the, fit, the fly has to stabilize himself. And so they do that by, you know, putting a radius to their body and just they'll move their legs a little bit, the wings, you know, but they're always moving their abdomen back and forth. And that's what this fly was done to represent. And so super simple fly, but the thing about it, it's a single wing fly. What I found was that about 70% of your spinners end up with a one wing profile, which everything we've ever been taught is that they're, they're spent like this. It's not true. It's not even close to true. So what I'm going to do this one on, I'm going to do a, uh, just a standard olive cripple. I'm going to tie it on 1140, or, or 1110 I mean, 14. This is a Daiichi. Uh, this is a ring eye hook. Uh, like, I, 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 I tie a lot of my dries on ring eyes. For a tail, it's going to be uh, micro barred fibettes. Uh, I love these things. In the past, I always used hackle. And I'm going to go over that when we start. It was just, it's just, I'm just, these are new. I'm just kind of liking them just lately, tying with them. They, they seem to work fine. Body's going to be super fine. And I didn't mention this. Uh, I was doing a video earlier about some dry fly stuff. I've used super fine forever. This isn't a plug, but I've been really hard to bust out of anything. You know, I've been tying with super fine probably since I believe this stuff came out, um, uh, in the 70s, and I've been using it. And I got this tight, top flight dry fly dubbing from Hairline. This is the first stuff, and I've not used this enough, I'm not endorsing it, I'm just saying, it's the first stuff that I've used that I think is as close and is as good to that stuff. Uh, I still haven't used it enough to say, hey, we gotta jump off and you know run this stuff. The last thing I'm gonna, or the next thing I'm gonna have is the wing. This is just sparkly merger. Forever, I tie with z -line or Z-Yarn. I don't think that really matters. Whatever material you like, this has a just kind of a really cool sheen to it. It's got a little, it's a little reflective. It's the right color. It's pretty stiff, which I like. It's just, it, it works out pretty well. And so then we're going to have some uh, Tenot Roman Mauser Power Silk. I love this stuff. I tie a lot of my flies with this. So the most important thing here is how we're going to bend the hook because... Back in the day when we first came out with these things, we had uh, Tiemco was doing the hooks and we, they were bending them and it, they just weren't quite getting to where I wanted them. And so we, and, and the fly didn't take off enough to say, man, they're just killing it with this hook. And so it, they kind of, they kind of went away and you have to bend your own. Personally, I bent my own forever anyway. And what I want to show you is how I do that. So this is a ring eye hook and I'm going to bend this in thirds and you can do this with jewelers pliers too but what I do the problem with that is you've got to hold the hook and bend it and when you do that it can get off to one side. If you put the whole hook inside this vise you can't it, it can never tilt one way or the other but the real critical thing here is that you have to have play in that vise jaw. It cannot be tight. It's got to be at least half again bigger than, it's just loose inside the vise. And you'll never break a hook. If it's tight, you're gonna break it every time. Okay, go in here, we're gonna bend this hook in thirds. So I'm gonna come in roughly at the third mark, I'm gonna give it a bend here, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna bend it again. 
And then I'm going to look at it and say, yeah, that's a pretty good bend. If you want a little bit more, you want it just slightly kinkier. I know there's some of you out there that like things kinkier. That'll be, just give it a little bit more bend. Now, I want to show you how to re, to just, it's a reference. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't a rule. This is just a reference. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a, a standard scud hook and you're going to lay this hook on its side like this on a piece, and you'll see this, we're gonna do a close up of it. Take a pen and just trace the outside of that hook, all right? That's gonna give you a short vision, a little profile of the outside of the bend. That's basically what we're looking for. Then you just take your hook and we'll put this little bodkin in here and poke that in there. And then you can see when I, when I lay it up against there, I can see that's about the radius you want. And, and again, it's a generalization. Uh, the guy, one of the, the, the finest tires and fishermen I've ever known in my life is named Andy Sabota. He's a, a different one. He's, this guy used to do his with a, I mean, 15, 20 degree more bend to the hook than I ever put on my own. Well, he usually outfished me, which I don't like to admit, uh, <clears throat> but it's true. And so, and it had to do, something had to be different. So uh, I started bending mine sometimes a little bit more too. So, but it's just, like I said, it's just a reference. It's not, if, you know, you'll, you'll tie them how you like them. And if they fish, they fish, and they will. So you hear me talk about using the thread, the hook as a gauge. Oh, I have a posture control mechanism back here. This is Belle. Y'all remember her? She's been around for a while now. But she has decided to take residence in my tying chair whenever I tie. So I get about this much seat to sit on. Not that my dogs are spoiled. They're not. So I use the hook as a gauge. And so I'm going to come in here. This fly is tied in two-thirds, one-third. Two-thirds is your abdomen. One-third, full-third, is your thorax. And don't, don't short yourself on this. I'd rather you had 50-50 than you had a quarter left in the front. You want it to have a full-bodied thorax. And so we're going to come in here. You're going to start your thread right at that two-thirds mark. Then we're going to work back. Right back to where you normally would set your tails. We're going to take these fibettes. Now I want to mention something I said earlier <clears throat> about if you... If you're using the hackle from your neck for your tail, which I have always done until, when did these come out? These last year, the micro bars, the micro bar thibets came out last year, I think, and they're just really cool looking. They've they've got a, a really super cool look to them, and a little more, you know, more durable. <clears throat> and so I just thought I'd give them a whirl. But if you're using your neck, you use the outside here, on the inside looking at it, it'd be right up in here. Use the outside of your neck and the upper half. And the reason you do that is these are the longer, stiffer fibers. And what I would do on mine is I'd come in here, I'd always pull about, and if you want to use, if you want to sub this right now, go for it. I'm going to use the fibets just because they're kind of fun. But when you look at a feather, if you're trying to decide which is the left or the right side, you always look at the shiny side of the feather, the side that would come off that you're looking at right here. All right? So you pull that off, it's, it's the shiny side, and you always come off the right side of the feather on this fly because it's, we're trying to create a radius. The radius is going like this. I like it to follow it. So you come off the right side, you pull a few of these fibers off, and you try not to let them twist in your hand. Oops. And you just you'd set them like that, and that radius would follow it. It's, it doesn't mean anything to the fish. It just looks good, all right? So, so that's where that feather would come from. All your tailing, by the way, doesn't matter if it's this fly or another fly, all your tailing comes off of that. But like I said, I'm gonna use these new fivettes. This is an MFC product. I, I don't know if any Montana fly, this is a, I just, these are the first ones that came out that to me are legitimately realistic looking. They just, I, I think they look better than the, the natural feather does because they got these little tiny micros. Now we're going to come in here, and we want this to, like I always say, if you're going to err wrong here, if you're going to err, err long, do not err short. The tail has a 
incredible function to dry flies. When your fly hits the water and breaks through the surface, the tail is the stabilizer, the thing that stalls that fly from going through and sinking its ass down and then sinking. And so the tails catch that on the water, boom. If it's really short and stubby, they pierce the water, your fly's riding like this. That's not what we're looking for. So we're going to try to air, not at all, we're going to try to go in here and make it exactly the body length. Come in here, take a pinch wrap. There's your pinch wrap, take a look. Set, anchor, three, you're done. I'm going to cut this off just a little. These things are so thin that, I, you know, normally I would carry them all the way forward, wrap my thread, and come back. I don't have to do that with these because they're just so thin. I'm not going to get any bulk to that body, and so I'm not going to get a bump. Now, into the dubbing. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that I never do dubbing Never say never. <clears throat> Very seldom do I do anything that is a, a, a monotone, just a single tone. I like to always use a, a model look to my fly. So if, if you looked at a fly, even if you were looking at, say, a, a sulfur if you're out east or a PMD back here, these really pale yellow body, there's still a segmented look to the body, even though it's one color, because you have layers of that abdomen. And so they're, they're like, they move there, right? So you've always got this little bit of a verniculation, you know, variegation, I mean, look to it. So to get that, I'm going to show you a super simple trick. Take this, this is olive brown. Always start with your light color. I'm going to take the light colored olive brown. I'm going to come over here to the brown. And you do this in thirds. One third, two thirds. You want to go 50, 50. This, is, this is how I do it. <laughs> If you want to do it 50-50 or whatever, start light, start dark, it doesn't matter. But for me, I always do one-third, two-thirds. You see, I lay these, I lay them on here, and there's dark on the top, olive on the bottom, just like that. And then I don't, you don't try to get olive brown now. What you're trying to do is go one-third, two-thirds, three. We fold it over three times. Don't sit and keep going and trying to make it look olive brown. When, what I'm trying to do is when I pick, and I'm sure you can't see that very well, but when I pick, I don't look at this. I reach down here and I pick it out, and as it comes off, it's random. And so there'll be a light and a dark and a light and a dark. If you sit and pick at it, it, it won't look that well. It'll, it'll look contrived. So we're going to take this. Now I've got it perfectly blended in my hand. And now I want to show you a really simple trick. I've done it in lots of my videos. Am I in your way, Bill? I've done it in lots of my videos. <clears throat> I don't want to use that stuff. I just did it. And when you take, if you have enough, you, these fibers are really thin, and you want every one to wrap around the thread. If e the tighter that body is, the less water absorbs, the longer your fly is going to float. And so you'll see people start tying, and they'll put a whole bunch of dubbing on here, start wrapping it, and suddenly they got what's called a dog leg. There's just this big gob of uh, dubbing out the side, and it's not even connected to their thread. It's because they started with too much dubbing. They, they're rushing themselves. So if you, here's a, it's a per example, you pull it off and there's too much, see that thing just hit the ground? It's just too much dubbing. And what's going to happen with that dubbing, you're going to try to push it on there, you can squeeze it really tight like that, and you think you've got it, and you start wrapping, it's all loose, your body sucks. Your, your body's not going to float well. You didn't do it right. And you pick these out when they're nice and thin. I know you're not going to be able to see this on camera, but it's sitting right here. Now it'll come, I'll try to, I don't know where that one went. I'm going to do this. I'm going to drop it, and hopefully it goes by this light. And it's floating, and you see it? I can grab this stuff. It's just, <laughs> shit. Okay. Well, at any rate, if you do it right, it's floating around in here, right? There, there's, <laughs> it's right here. So it'll just, that tells you that they're nicely broke up and you don't have a gob of this stuff. And when you start putting it on the hook, every one of those things is going to wrap around the thread. So now I'm going to come in here, pick just a little bit of this off. These are pretty thin bodies. I'm going to come forward. And that's why I don't like to wax my threads when I do this. I, I wax it when I start just to get it to stick. And then I don't like this when I'm dubbing to have thread around it. Now, I'm, I'm progressively making a little bit more taper forward. And each time, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking just a, just a few fibers, 
and then making every one wrap right around that hook. Okay, and so now, stay. Now I'm going to just come in here and I'm going to start wrapping. And what's going to happen is because I've blended those things, I'm going to get a modeled up close work, a little bit more, a little bit more juice on the glasses there. So I'm going to come in here. I have a cut on my thumb and it keeps catching my dubbing and my thread. So I didn't quite have enough there. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to just build this taper as I go forward. And it'll start looking very variegated because I have two different colors of dubbing in here. And I'm going to leave that just right there. I'm going to leave it just a little bit, just a little bit shy of where I'm going to start putting everything else in. Now I'm going to tie this hackle in. The hackle has to go around. We're going to tie it in first. But what I want you to understand on this fly is I want your hackle to be a full one size bigger than a normal hackle would be. So if your hackle gauge tells you it's supposed to be a 14, go to a 12. And the only, and I just basically, I don't have a hackle gauge. I just kind of look at it and go, okay, that's good. That's one size bigger, roughly. Come in here, cut the, cut the junk out of that feather, the, the aftershaft and all that stuff. Come in here and just cut, cut that off, just the, the stem, so you're working on a bare stem. And now we're going to come in here, this is how I set all my hackles. You set it from the bottom, you, you take the hack, the thread's hanging straight down. You take this hackle and you bump from the right to the left, you bump into it, do one wrap over top of it, come back around the back side, one there, don't hook that stem, and then just do two turns and tighten and you hold the body and tighten i'm just reefing on this hook what i'm doing is it's simultaneously compressing all the way around that feather okay we do that because i we put the hackle in first because it's a lot easier to work with that in there before we put the wing in the wing's not that big a deal the wings just sparkle emerger yarn like i said uh, I, I've used Zeline all my life. I just started playing with this stuff, and I kind of like it. There's, I use about two of the, 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 the equivalent of two of these strands on this. There's no way to tell you what that is, because you pick up Zeline, it might be one. And I always double it over, because I fold it around my thread, which you'll see in a second. And so I basically just strip off what I think I, what I, think I need here. And again, I'm going to double this up. I have more than a lengthwise here. Then. So, and then when you're setting materials like this, when you're setting them posting up, setting thing on the top, on the side, and, and when you can use a material like this, here's a simple way to set these things so you don't, you're not fighting it. You come in here, you simply wrap that around your hook, all right? I just wrap that piece around the hook. <clears throat> And when you, then you bend this, you bend it around, you, the thread, you're bending it like this, right? So now I'm putting a right angle to that. And when I do that, it creates a little cup it, because the, the thread is bending. It starts here, comes around, and it cups this stuff. So when I cup that, I can come in here, I can just position that wherever I want that to go. If it, and you just hold on to the other end. So you, you've got that little tiny, there's a, kind of a stray one here. So you got this little tiny bend to it, creates that little radius down there. Come in, you set it. You want it up here, you put it in. I want it dead on the side. Boom, I come in, one, two, and just pull, and it's anchored. Now I'm going to work my way back here. This is why I want to just have the hackle already in, because it's easier now to continue. Now I'm going to dub the rest of this. Now, a, a, a general rule of thumb is that on your abdomen and your thorax, the junction, the abdomen is usually a third thinner. So in other words, your, your thorax should be a third thicker than the abdomen. And it's generally slightly darker. 
And so now I kind of look for the a little bit darker. I still kind of just go random, but I'm going to occasionally. Ooh, it's got a big gap of stuff in it. That. Has some something from the tying table in it there. All right, so I'm going to come in here, same thing. We're going to dub nice and thin. Everyone's going around it nice and tight. We're not getting any dog legs. Get it started, pull it up. But now I'm going to start as I move forward. I'm going to just take a peek and see if maybe I can get a little, just slightly darker. You don't have to be black. You know, it has to be like this dark brown, but just slightly darker than the olive I started with. So I'm going to put couple turns behind the hack on the wing just to start. Move forward. Leave yourself room for the eye or for the head of the hook, the fly. And then I'm just building it. I'm building this taper. But the other thing I'm doing is I'm holding on to this wing so it's not getting wrapped around. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I, I push it back into the wing, back into the body. And then I build a, a bump behind it again. So what I'm doing is trying to compress this stuff back but I don't want the wing to ever fold against the body completely. And so I just kind of one, two, now I'm looking, now I'm going to take a quick peek underneath and just see if I'm building that taper that I want on the, on the abdomen. I'm just, I just need a little bit more. It's just a little thin for my liking on the bottom. Slide this up. Get out of there. And again, one third, two thirds. And we're going to build a little bit of bulk with our with our um, hackle. So leave room for. Generally on these, I do a three turn uh, head. Three. So the, the length of the head I'm going to look for is three turns of thread. So now we're going to take this, I want one complete turn behind the wing, but I'm already halfway up, so really it's going to look like I do too, but I got to go, I want to go all the way around the, 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 the body. And so I move the wing to the side, I got a straggler back there, I got, that's, all right, that's not a full turn yet, because I just made... Two thirds. So I'm going to go all the way around. That's a full turn. And what that does is it, it stops the wing from being able to lay back against the body. And now I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do one, two. You could use your rotary right now. Now I got two full turns of hackle. And then this one's coming up the back side. And you leave that on the back away. You're leaving your hackle on the way side from you. Give it a couple turns and now pull it this way. And what you're going to do is you're going to make, you'll have two antenna out the front. It'll be, there'll be one out here, one out here. You know, it, it's just kind of a cool little effect if you want to. You don't have to, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Okay, I almost made it through without having to change glasses only twice. So, I can't see those antennas, so I was trying to make sure they're in there. Okay. Three turns. Whatever, I mean, that's, that is not a, it's not a necessity. How many turns you put is up to you. Okay, now we're going to trim this wing out. <clears throat> Make sure everything's, don't rush yourself right now. Make sure you've got the wing, everything's where it belongs. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this wing at an angle down. And I'm going to have the shortest, the shortest down here are going to be the shortest fibers. It's going to be right against the body. And so the shortest ones are right where the tail and the body meet. So I can go just like that, and now I know I'm pretty close to, I got everything that's the, against the body. It ended right there. And now what I do is I take the wing, 
and I shape it just a little bit. I come in here and I start creating a roundness to this wing. And so it's just a little bit more accurate in the shape of an actual mayfly wing. See, I built the, these really short ones. Can you see that, Jeremy? Is that good? Yep. The shortest wings are right here, and they just come in and just trim them up. Just, you know, don't worry about wasting 30 seconds here. Make them look cool. Because you know in one fish it's going to be destroyed anyway. It's going to all be one gob. But it'll look cool when you pull it out of the box. So, <clears throat> now, this is a... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm supposed to quit drinking coffee. That's what makes me do that. So I'm drinking tea. It isn't working. So, now I'm going to have... This is supposed to be a knockdown spinner. Or you can fish it through a dry tube. But because it's a spinner, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to flatten this out. I'm not going to have any of this hackle sticking up from the bottom. Come in here, make a couple nice flat cuts. Boom. There you are. Everything's right with the world. The wing's not... If you see, I saw some stubble right there. I didn't like that. Cut that off. Now, my abdomen's darker. You can see... Did I move that on you? Is that good? Mm -hmm. All right. The, the abdomen's a little bit thicker. I mean, the, the thorax is a little bit thicker than the abdomen, I mean. you got a nice wing shape to your fly. you got the shortest fibers down here. They're going to stabilize the fly from collapsing down. Got your antennas are a little crazy. I didn't have my glasses on. Somebody's going to yell at me. All right. They're sitting out there. If you want to knock the top of this off, you can. It does. I hardly ever tie... I used to on my spinners. I would cut this top and I would try to end up with everything really clean. And then you get slightly older and you say, wow, it'd be nice to see something out there. If you leave these hackles up, the fish can't see them. It's not going to change the way the fly fishes. And it gives you just a little bit of something to see on the surface of the water. So that's the cripple. I'm going to show you. They can't see the tails. Is that, I don't think you still can. Can you see the tails? Here's your tails. So that's the fly. It's, uh, like I said, one of my favorite flies I've ever designed in my life. I've got <clears throat> 100-plus national patterns. To me, this is my absolute most important contribution to our sport because it was the first time to address the radius to the body to the fly, which I think is really, really critical. Uh, that's one of my favorite flies of all time. I hope it helps you out.